Hello, I am Zarkoon, and this is World of Warships Legends. Before we begin today, I want to preface this video by saying I don't normally like to show games like this, because this is, well, it may not be evident to begin with, but it turns into a rather one-sided stomp at the end, and I really don't like to showcase those games because I don't think they're that interesting to watch. This one, however, even though it is a one-sided stomp on the part of my team, there is a couple of amusing events that are going to happen in this game, and mostly that's why I wanted to point them out. Now, of course, we are playing the legendary tier British light cruiser HMS Minotaur, so when we're looking at the enemy team composition, we shouldn't be surprised to see other legendary tier ships like the Yamato out there, for example. Of course, if you take out a legendary tier ship, you're likely to get in a game where you are facing legendary tier ships on the enemy team. But what you probably don't expect to find in a legendary tier game is a tier 6 ship. Now, if you do see a tier 6 ship, it is obviously because that tier 6 ship chose to division with a tier 7 ship, and the presence of their tier 7 division mate unfortunately pulled them up into a legendary tier game. And you might see that once, as is the case with this battleship out there. Oh, he just disappeared behind that island. Let's see if we can reacquire vision. Ah, yes, it is a Gneisenau, the tier 6 German battleship. And this is not the only now in this game. There are two of them, and, well, I want this to sort of be a public service announcement to all of you in a sense. The now is not the Tier 6 ship that you want to be taking out into Legendary Tier games, and this first now out here, well, he's presenting himself to us 11 kilometers away. That was a nasty, scary shot from the Yamato out there. Let's respond to him real quick before we return to raining down our armor-piercing spam on this now to teach him the error of his ways. Of all the Tier 6 ships you could possibly choose to take into a division with a teammate who is playing a Tier 7 ship, I think the Gneisenau would have to be squarely on the last of the list. There is no way, shape, or form that this particular Tier 6 battleship can compete against any legendary Tier ships. Now, there are some Tier 6 ships in this game that I think could make a good show of competing against legendary Tier ships, but I don't think really any battleship at Tier 6 is well suited to that. I would say if you want to be very cheeky and you want to try to purposely up-tier yourself in a Tier 6 ship into a Legendary Tier game, then the number one ship on your choice has to be the Weimar, which has so much ridiculous firepower at Tier 6 that I'm convinced it could easily stand up against Tier 7 and even Legendary Tier ships. The only thing, of course, is you won't want to be shot if you do up-tier yourself in the Weimar into a Legendary Tier game, but the same is true with the Minotaur. We certainly don't want to be shot in this thing either, lest we be dev-struck. Now, we've taken up an interesting position here on this new map, which I believe is called Warrior's Path. We're out here on the flank, and I think I featured this map in the video I posted yesterday or the other day. And you'll notice that my team here is sort of doing the same thing that my team in that video did, which is namely group up into the center. And I don't think you really want to group up into the center on this map. Why not? Well, because there is a small ring of islands around the center, and this ring of islands separates the enemy base from the friendly base, and there's maybe, you know, a few 5-10 kilometers in between them. I don't know exactly what the math is, but they're very close to each other. The spawns are very close to each other, so the idea here has to be that you want to get out onto these flanks, as we've done here. We've 
taken up a position behind this island where we are still spotted. Most likely because the enemy Shimakaze, I believe, is spotting us somewhere. Although we've just dropped spot and we're going to move forward a little bit as this Richelieu charges in. Perhaps we're going to get some torpedoes sent at him. And by the way, I should point out that... Six minutes have passed in this game, and with the Richelieu going down, that is, in fact, the very first enemy ship to be sunk. So, this flank is down one enemy ship, and we're going to start pushing forward again. Still spotted, likely, by that Shimakaze. But the points that we're going to build to here are... An interesting interaction with the second enemy Ganais now, who has yet to reveal himself, and this enemy Minotaur out here hiding behind an island. Now, the Minotaur is a squishy ship. Let's get that out of the way right away. Uh, if you have played this ship, you may have been dev-struck in it at least once. It's certainly not a ship that you want to invite enemies to shoot at. You may, in fact, want to try to play it in a way similar to how this enemy Minotaur is playing it, by hugging an island, using it as cover and concealment, and using your very, very floaty AP shells to lob over said island at your enemies. But if you are going to do that kind of thing, then you want to pay attention to two things, two very, very important things. Actually, hold that thought as we pay attention to our minimap here and notice the second enemy Ganais now coming through the center. We are a little bit panicked when we notice this Ganais now because even though he is, well, let's just say he's not the best tier six battleship in this game, he is still a tier six battleship and he does have 15 inch guns. Even though those guns are small in number and not what you could ever accuse of being accurate. They are still big enough to punch through our armor and they could still probably strike our citadel. But as you can see, that Gneisenau stands no chance against the Minotaur's armor piercing and he is thoroughly shredded for his troubles, proving once again that uh, you should be careful about how you set up your divisions. Anyway, back to this enemy Minotaur who is sitting stationary, sort of behind this island. If you are going to post up behind an island in your light cruiser and lob shells over the island at your enemies, the two things you want to pay attention to are number one, are you spotted? Clearly, this enemy Minotaur is spotted. The second question you need to ask yourself is, if I am spotted, can the enemy team shoot at me? And for this particular Minotaur out here, the answer to that is also yes. I have been shooting at this Minotaur for the better part of the last couple of minutes, chunking him here and there for armor-piercing damage, and he really hasn't been maneuvering all that much in order to avoid that. In fact, he gets struck in the Citadel there and promptly goes down. So. A bit of a teaching moment, I think. Something I wanted to point out in this game as far as light cruiser play behind islands go. I don't want to pick on that player or even on the two Gneisenaus who quite inadvisedly took that ship out into what became a legendary tier game. I don't want to shame these players or anything. I just want to point out uh, some of the mistakes that they were making, as in the case of that Minotaur, who probably should have abandoned that island or at least maneuvered more aggressively to avoid any return fire from me or my teammates. But he didn't do that, and now he is dead. And I think that is something that you need to keep in mind. It's a good idea to keep the cruiser moving, even if it is standing behind an island, especially if it's spotted. Because if you can lob shells over an island, it's likely that at least some of the enemy ships can lob shells back at you in return, especially if they're the exact same ship as you are. And if you find yourself getting hit by those shells, well, it's time to move, otherwise you're going to die, as that Minotaur found out the hard way. Now, 
As for the rest of this game, the enemy team has lost, what is that, six ships? Meanwhile, my team has lost two, so a bit of a one-sided stomp. All that's really left to do is farm some damage as we get hit there very hard, in fact, by the Montana. But we are going away now, we are no longer spotted, and we're looking at the minimap, even though this game does look eminently winnable for our team, we still want to always be paying attention to what's going on, and... Since we are looking at the minimap, we do notice that there is an enemy cruiser. I think in this case, the enemy Alaska headed back toward our base. We take out the Montana there, which is quite nice after hitting him over and over with our rapid fire AP spam. And we're moving into a position to intercept this Alaska, or at least assist our teammates in intercepting him on his way toward our base. Of course he stands no chance against me and my teammates here he is going to end up going down we're just trying to get some hits on him as he maneuvers here and when you're looking at uh, ships behind islands like this it can be helpful to look at the minimap you can see that the Alaska is making a turn toward the left of the screen and in fact that Minotaur earlier may take notes from this Alaska who is it should be said not solely trying to avoid us because he's got an Amagi shooting at him and I think there the Amagi takes him down or actually the Yamato takes him down but if you are posting up behind an island in your light cruiser, well, then you should probably not give flat broadside to the location where enemy shells are coming down at you, and you should instead make some turns. But then, if you find yourself in a situation like this, where the game is all but over and it's only being dragged out by a rather cowardly destroyer, no offense to that player of course, but if you do find yourself in this situation as a destroyer and you're literally the last ship left alive on your team versus uh, seven enemy ships, you have zero hope of winning so you might as well just come out guns blazing and go down in a blaze of glory, you know, uh, farm a little bit more damage or something. Don't drag it out for the other players still stuck inside the game. Otherwise, they may uh, start shooting at their teammates, launching torpedoes at them. And, you know, there's a little bit of value in that. It's, uh, I guess it's called target practice, as we're doing here. But in any case, the uh, Shimakaze, I don't think he's going to show himself for the rest of the game. So we're just going to sail around here rather aimlessly while we wait for this game to end. And in the meantime, I am going to give you a little update on the channel. Today is Thursday, the 17th of February, 2022. And normally I stream on Fridays. Well, tomorrow I am finishing up my penultimate week at my current job and my work schedule is a little bit hairy. So I don't think I will, in fact, be streaming on Friday the 18th of February, but instead I will stream on Saturday, probably in the evening, somewhere around 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, Saturday the 20th of February 2022. That is where you can look out for me if you want to catch me streaming live instead of the usual Friday time. But fear not, because after this, next week is my very last week at my current job. I'll be starting a new one. And while I am training, I will have to work on Fridays, so I'll be streaming Friday nights for the next couple of months. But after that, I will have every Friday off for the foreseeable future. And thus, I will be able to stream at probably any time on Fridays. So that should uh, make things a little bit more stable in terms of my content creating schedule. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this rather amusing look at a legendary tier game. Be sure to leave a comment, give the video a thumbs up before you go, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.